Remember the metals in the middle of the periodic table? They're known as transition metals, and things get messy beyond elements 20. For reasons unknown to grade 10 students, some transition metals may have multiple wacky electron configurations resulting in different valence charges. I'll include a link up above if you want to know more about this topic. For example, iron may end up with two different valence configurations, one with a charge of plus two, or one with a charge of plus three. Mercury may end up with a charge of plus two, or maybe plus one. Lead may end up with a charge of plus four, or maybe a charge of just plus two. The details of why this happens will be covered in senior chemistry classes, but for now, let's just focus on how to tell a chemist which version we are looking for. First off, if you look really closely at the periodic table, there are some tiny numbers written right above the symbol. Some elements may have just one number above, and others might have multiple tiny numbers written above. If it has one number on top, it's just a regular ionic metal. But if there are multiple numbers, then the metal is classified as a multivalent metal. You might also notice that some nonmetals also have multiple numbers written above the symbol. But for the purposes of grade 10, let's just ignore it for now. The details of that madness will also be covered in future grades. So if you really want to know why this happens and what to do with it, please click like and subscribe to Grade 11 Chemistry and Grade 12 Chemistry. Also, smash that bell button if you happen to see one on your course selection paper as well. As a quick review of Roman numerals, you could watch this awesome video, but for copyright reasons, I'll include a link above so that you can watch it on your own. Let's review through Roman numerals. 1 is written with a capital I. 2 is written with two capital I's. 3 with three capital I's. 4 is one less than 5, so it's written as IV. 5 is written as V, 6 is written as VI, and finally 7 is written as VII. In chemical notation, it is important to write brackets around each Roman numeral, as it's a notation for... Let's use the example of iron bonding with oxygen. If you look closely at the periodic table, iron has two possible charges, Fe plus 2 and Fe plus 3. So there are two possible chemical outcomes. If iron with a charge of plus two bonds with oxygen, the correct nomenclature would be iron, two in Roman numerals, oxide. Or if iron with a charge of plus three bonds with oxygen, the correct nomenclature would be iron, three, oxide. Both of these are examples of a convention called stock naming convention. Let's convert both of these examples into their corresponding chemical formula. Iron 2 already has plus 2 in its name, but for oxygen, you'll have to look it up on the periodic table. Remember, even though it's in the third last column, it has a charge of negative 2. With both of these reference numbers, we can use the crossover rule from the last video to determine the corresponding formula. When iron plus 2 bonds with oxygen negative 2, we get FeO. Remember, you need to reduce the 2 to 2 ratio down to 1 to 1. So this is how you convert the stock nomenclature of iron 2 oxide into its chemical formula. In the second example, iron 3 already has plus 3 in its name, and oxygen still has a charge of minus 2. Remember to ignore the multivalent nature of nonmetals when they bond with metals. Next, we use a crossover rule to determine the corresponding formula. When iron plus 3 bonds with oxygen minus 2, we get Fe2O3. Remember not to include any negative numbers in the formula, otherwise you're asking the reader to go shopping for negative two irons. Remember, if the metal is multivalent, you have to write down Roman numerals and its nomenclature. Otherwise, the reader will have no idea which version you are referring to. Take a look at these two images. They're both iron oxide. The one on the left contains iron plus two, and the one on the right contains iron plus three. Even though both compounds are iron oxide, they have very different visual appearances. So that's why it is important to include the Roman numerals in its nomenclature. Otherwise, the compound will be a complete mystery to the reader. Pause this video and work on the bottom section of the worksheet. Remember, there is a link in the description below where you can download the course pack. 
Did you check your homework with the answer key? Good. Now let's talk about... If you take a look at your parents' or grandparents' chemistry textbook, it might describe multivalent chemicals slightly differently. In fact, when I used to etch my own circuit boards, I had to use ferric chloride to dissolve away the unwanted copper on the circuit board. Once upon a time, chemists thought that multivalent metals had only two possible valence configurations. To tell the two apart, the metals would be referred to by the root of their Latin name. For example, the Latin word for tin is stannum. Taking a peek at the periodic table, we see that tin can either have a charge of plus 4 or plus 2. So if you needed to purchase tin 4 oxide for a project, you would order stannic oxide. Or if you need to purchase tin plus 2 oxide for a project, you would order stannous oxide. A good memory aid for classical naming system is I for high, O for low. So if you're looking for iron 3 oxide for a science fair project, you would look for ferric oxide. And if you're looking for iron 2 oxide, you would look for ferrous oxide. And if you're looking for ferric chloride, you would be looking for FeCl3. You should also be able to convert formula back into its corresponding nomenclature. Let's reverse engineer these three examples. Before copper fell in love with chlorine, they both had a charge of 1 as bachelors and bachelorettes. Chlorine is a halogen, so it definitely has a charge of minus 1. On the periodic table, copper exists either as copper 1 or copper 2. So we have to tell the reader specifically which one to use. In this case, it's copper 1, so the stock nomenclature for CuCl is copper I chloride. Remember that I has to be capital, and it also has to be covered in brackets. Next example. Before copper got hitched with sulfur, they both had a charge of 1. But wait, something's not right. Sulfur is in the third last column, so it must have had a charge of negative 2. That would have meant that in order to reduce to a 1 to 1 ratio, copper once had a charge of plus 2. So in this case, the original 2 to 2 ratio dropped to 1 to 1 in the final formula. That was sneaky, and it's something to watch out for. So the stock nomenclature for this compound is copper 2 sulfide. Last example. Before sodium bonded with chlorine, they both had a charge of 1. It's probably tempting to write down sodium 1 chloride, but unfortunately, that's not the correct answer. Remember, all alkali metals have a charge of plus 1, so it's not necessary to include the Roman numeral 1. The final answer is just sodium chloride. The best way to retain new information is by practice, practice, practice. So take the time right now to complete the worksheet and as usual compare your answers with the answer key and use a red pen to mark your errors. For additional practice you can always reprint the same page and practice again until there are no more red marks on your paper. I'll see you in the next episode.